Uh, thank you very much, Adrian, and thank you very much to Energy and Mines, um, Andrew and Suki as well for all of the organisation uh, and a great opportunity for Sun Metals to present at a conference like this and also uh, visit Perth. The, the weather's beautiful at the moment, so um, not, not so sure Saturday and Sunday look so good, but today's beautiful. So uh, I'll talk you through uh, the presentation I have today. Uh, on the, the solar project for Sun Metals. Uh, first of all, I'll, I'll talk about Sun Metals itself. Uh, we're not a miner, we're a refiner, so we're taking um, zinc concentrates from mines around Australia and around the world and uh, producing uh, zinc metal from that. Uh, but I think there's a lot of parallels there and probably a lot of opportunities also for mines to to consider by, by looking at the case study. So Sun Metals, uh, who we are. Uh, Sun Metals is a wholly owned subsidiary of Korea Zinc. Korea Zinc is the largest zinc metal produ producer in the world, uh, refined zinc metal producer, producing about 1.2 million tonnes of zinc metal per year uh, which is about 10% of the world's total production. Uh, the, the refinery in North Queensland, uh, about 10 kilometres south of Townsville, is uh, one of the most advanced zinc refineries in the world, a very high degree of, of automation. And the reason for that really was, uh, if you look on a global scale, uh, Australia has a lot of advantages, but um, the cost of labour is not one of them. So. Uh, Korea Zinc put a lot of effort into automation and technology for the refinery to make sure that uh, it, it was not as labour intensive as a lot of other zinc refineries around the world. The refinery was constructed in uh, 1999 and commissioned at the end of, of 99 in October. Uh, the current zinc production levels at the moment are about 225,000 tonnes per annum. We produce uh, a whole range of byproducts from the process as well, so sulfuric acid, uh, copper and cadmium uh, product, and uh, zinc ferrite residue as well. Uh, about 420,000 tonnes of sulfuric acid, which goes to uh, fertiliser manufacturing processes in North Queensland as well. About 4,000 tonnes of a copper cadmium concentrate and about 160,000 tonnes of a zinc ferrite residue which goes to Korea Zinc in Korea and they process to a, a, a pure state for most of the, the remaining elements in that product. Uh, at present, the refinery employs 281 uh, direct employees and about 50 contractors. So just an overview of the process and I won't go into detail on, on any of it, it's a conventional zinc leaching or zinc uh, refining process, generally referred to as roast, leach, or electro win process. Uh, zinc recovery is about 90% from the process, so the 10% we don't recover uh, is, remains in the byproduct zinc ferrite, and Korea Zinc extract that when we send that to them. Uh, so roasting really is a high temperature furnace. Um, to oxidise the zinc. Zinc is a zinc sulphide form as it comes in as the concentrate. It's not easily dissolved. As a zinc oxide form, it's much more easily dissolved. Leaching is really dissolving the zinc contained in that material. And through the leaching process, we also dissolve a lot of the other materials present. So copper, cadmium, cobalt, nickel, uh, a whole host of elements. Following leaching, uh, we have a purification process which is to remove those impurities that would cause problems for further processing and as a, as a byproduct we produce our copper and cadmium cakes and cobalt and nickel also in that material. I guess for this, for this presentation the, the heart of a zinc refinery is really the electrolysis process and when we talk about our electricity consumption about 80% of our electricity consumption is in that electrolysis process. 
Uh, finally, uh, so electrolysis is really just depositing the zinc onto a cathode uh, in an electrolytic cell. Once the zinc has been deposited, it's a pure form. Uh, it's removed from the cathode plate and then it's melted in a casting process about 500 degrees. Uh, zinc melts at about 420 degrees and then it's poured into a mould, uh, into a shape that the customers can handle. So we process about 500,000 tonnes of zinc concentrate. Uh, we have in the past received concentrates from Western Australian mines. Uh, at the moment, we receive a, a, quite a lot of concentrate from Glencore, Mount Isa, um, Cannington at South 32, and a few other smaller Australian mines. We also receive uh, probably 60% of our concentrates at the moment from mines overseas, so Red Dog in North America, um, mines in Central America and South America as well. So it's really, uh, the, it's a global um, commodity and, and the concentrates feeding the process also, it's a global market. So the final product we're producing at the moment, about 225,000 tonnes of, of a pure zinc in two different forms, a slab and a jumbo product. So I, I talked about electrolysis as the heart of the zinc refinery. Uh, in electrolysis, uh, we're applying current through an electrolytic cell. The zinc, which is dissolved in solution at that point, plates out on the cathode plate, and it requires energy in the form of the applied current to actually drive that reaction. So I've got the reaction listed there. Uh, we've got zinc sulfate. Uh, going to a zinc metal form and we're regenerating sulfuric acid through that process. 80% of our electricity need uh, to produce one tonne of zinc metal takes about 4.2 megawatt hours of electricity, uh, which is probably about the same as an average household in, um, in Australia, an average quarterly electricity bill for any household in Australia at the moment, about 4.2 megawatt hours. Uh, in the cell house, it's about 3.2 megawatt hours just to plate the zinc. And the cell house is very easily controllable. The production rate is directly proportional to the applied current, to the power consumption. And we can control that production rate. We can go very quickly from a minimum holding current of 15 megawatts in that plant up to a maximum production rate at 110 megawatts. And at 110 megawatts, we're producing about 40 tonnes per hour of zinc metal. So we, with this project, we are actually taking advantage of the fact that we, we have this ability to turn up and turn down very quickly, uh, which, which is an advantage for us. It's an advantage that maybe mines may not have to the same degree, uh, but I'm sure there is an opportunity there also. Uh, this is an example of a, it's probably not a typical production day, but to give you an idea of how we, how we operate, and, and we really operate based, uh, our production rate is based purely on the electricity price at the time. We purchase electricity directly from the national electricity market, so we're a wholesale participant. We don't go through a retail provider. And we, we monitor the market price live. When the market price is low, we intend to be at maximum production. And when the market price is high, we reduce production accordingly. On occasions, in, in the national electricity market, the wholesale price can vary from, you can actually get negative electricity prices on rare occasions, and you can get maximum electricity prices up to $13,000 per megawatt hour. Uh, to give you an idea, historically, um, 2010 to 2014, average pool prices were uh, $40 a megawatt hour market pool price, $40 to $60 a megawatt hour. But the, the market can be very volatile, especially in summer and especially in the middle of winter as well. So the, the profile I've got here is a, is a summer day. It's January. And the dotted line is our demand. So 
Uh, it starts on the left at midnight. Uh, we're at maximum production. The green line is the power price, the market price, and it's, right, it's very low there to start. It's probably $30 a megawatt hour, the pool price. We come through till about 9 o'clock in the morning, and it looks like just a little blip there, but actually that, that's, that's probably $300 a megawatt hour, so it's gone from $40, $50 to $300. And you can see our response, the dotted line, we drop down. Uh, at that stage, it's a reduced production rate, and when that price returns to normal, we go back to a high production rate. When we get to the middle of the day, summer in Queensland, um, a hot day in Brisbane, a hot day in Sydney, uh, the market is, demand is, is crazy and the market price is very volatile. And on this occasion, that market price has gone up to about $10,000 a megawatt hour and it's been sustained for two hours, three hours during the day. So what we've done is we've dropped to a holding current, which is about 30 megawatts, and at holding current, that's just enough electricity, just enough power to make sure the zinc is, is maintained on the plate, on the cathode surface, it's not starting to dissolve. As soon as it starts to dissolve, we're going backwards. If we turn the power off completely, the zinc starts to re-dissolve. So to give you an idea, at $10,000 a megawatt hour, to make one ton of zinc is four, four megawatt hours, roughly. So it would be about $40,000 to make one ton of zinc if we kept going. And that one ton of zinc, we would then sell at market price about $2,500 a ton. So a huge loss. And we've taken, we've, we've operated this way for the last 10 years based on market pool price and our ability to turn up and turn down because we've been able to beat the average pool price operating this way. When, when the price is low, we're at maximum. When the price is high, we're just at a minimum production rate. So we haven't, we, we have hedged on occasions. Uh, at the moment, we have no hedge in place and that's because of uh, the current market and what uh, current future prices look like. Uh, the three pictures up the top there, the one on the left is the control room. We have software implemented that monitors the market price live. Uh, the software, when it, so we have trigger levels. When the, when the level goes above trigger level one, $120 a megawatt hour, for example, we go to a minimum production level. That's a, that's a signal that's sent to the rectiformer, uh, the, the machine in the middle the picture in the middle. And so, so the production rate is automatically controlled by the software. When it gets above trigger level two, which is extreme or high, higher extreme power price, we drop down to this holding current. And on occasions now, we actually turn power off. Uh, we can do that for probably an hour, but beyond that time, it becomes, uh, we're, we're really going backwards and it can actually become a little bit of a health and safety issue as well. Uh, the picture on the right is the operator in the, in the electrolysis plant removing cathode plates from the cell. And about every 48 hours, every 40 to 48 hours, they go back to those same cells, remove the cathode plates and harvest the zinc. Uh, there's, so our production rate is about 600 to 700 tonnes per day normally. During periods of volatile power price, we can sit idle for, for 12 hours a day, just waiting for that power price to settle down so we can go back to normal, normal operation. So I guess that's just a little background on how we have operated, and that's actually a driver for why a solar project works for us. This is what power price has looked like for us over the last, since, since the refinery started operation. To make one tonne of zinc in 2000 was costing us about $100 per tonne. Uh, in 2016, it's costing us about $300 a tonne. And so far this year, it's costing us nearly $500 a tonne. And that's not because we're less efficient. If anything, we're, we're probably more energy efficient than we were in 2000. It's because of... Um, market price and 
there's some network pricing in there as well. So we're very, electricity is 40% of our operating cost normally. Uh, so far this year, it's been about 60% of our cash operating cost. So energy is, is a key part of our business. In uh, 2016, our electricity bill was $78 million. So you can see if, if those prices continued as they are th at the moment in 2017, they're going to be 20 or 30% higher than that. So the objectives for us, uh, for a solar farm, and it's a 124.4 megawatt solar farm, uh, the objectives for Sun Metals is really to improve that long-term cost of supply of power and to improve that exposure to power price volatility. We're still going to be exposed. It's, it's a solar project, so there's still going to be exposure in the morning at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. There's going to be exposure in the evening at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. In the middle of the day, we should alleviate that exposure. And looking forward, uh, you know, there, there are carbon pricing and what that means in the future as well. This does de-risk that for us also. In North Queensland, we're at the very northern end of the national electricity market, the grid. And what we actually, what we pay for as a consumer, we, we pay for the transmission losses. So from the generation which is in southeast Queensland, uh, most of the generation, a lot of it in, some of it in central Queensland. From the time it goes from there to north Queensland, there's about 10% of that electricity is lost just through transmission losses. And as the consumer, as, an, as a large industrial consumer, we pay for those losses. So uh, $60 million a year in electricity and 10% of that is transmission losses. So there's another driver for the project. A, a solar farm, a generator on the doorstep, virtually no transmission losses. Just uh, an overview of the project. Uh, so the capital investment is $200 million. Uh, we've, we've reviewed it in a lot of detail and we've made sure that we're comfortable with a builder and uh, that, that builder is RCR O'Donnell Griffin, who are providing engineering, procurement and construction services for the project and have a good track record. Um, there is representatives here from RCR and if you're interested, I'm sure they'll be happy to talk to you about what they can do for, for similar projects. Along with that, we've got, uh, so we, we've got a good builder we, we need a good engineer, so we have, we've engaged ACOM and uh, on the design side, Oricon uh, as engineers. And uh, GHD has also been participating in the process. Uh, the, the material supplies, uh, the modules will be supplied by First Solar, so they're cadmium telluride thin film technology, uh, series four, um, 120 watt modules, and there'll be 1.26 million modules uh, for the project. Uh, the, the first solar modules are smaller than, than your normal uh, silicon type modules. Uh, uh, if we were going normal silicon type modules, you'd be probably looking at about 400,000 panels for the project. Um, AC capacity for the project is 124.4 megawatts and DC capacity, so installed module capacity is 151 megawatts. Uh, so I mentioned first solar, uh, the inverter supplier for the project is uh, InjaTeam and uh, there'll be 76 inverters across the site. Uh, at 26 different locations, so 26 power conversion stations. The, the spacing between rows, so that the, the design is a fixed tilt system, uh, 14 degree tilt facing north and a, and a fixed angle. 
Uh, spacing between rows is about seven metres from the centre of one row to the next, and distance between, between rows, so from the end of one row to the next, is only about two metres. And uh, one of the advantages for us is the project will be pl basically plugging into the existing uh, 132 kV substation on site which is Sun Metals substation. To give you a look at the, uh, what the generation profile looks like, and I've also included on that slide, uh, the blue line is uh, 2016, 2016 average um, market pool price for electricity. Uh, the yellow line is the load the, the refineries load, and there's a bit in the middle there which is, is what the load would look like without the solar farm and what the load looks like with the solar farm. So it steps up a little bit. It basically means we, we can effectively make more zinc, uh, more production with the solar farm as well. So with the load profile, you see generation starts uh, at about 6 a.m. in the morning at a minimum. Uh, by about 9 o'clock, we're about, we'll be generating about 60 megawatts. Uh, by about 10 o'clock, 10.30, we'll be very close to maximum generation from the solar farm, which, which matches our, the refinery load very well. Uh, maximum generation, about 125 megawatts and this, the refinery demand is about 125 megawatts, so it, it fits quite well. If you look at the blue line, uh, the blue line is how we were 2016 prices, and the yellow line is, is 20, well, the gray line is uh, 2016 load. So in 2016, in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning, the, the market pool price is $30 a megawatt hour, maybe $35 a megawatt hour, and we're at maximum production. At six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning, the average is about $80, $90 a megawatt hour, uh, and that's an average, so there's occasions where that would have been $1,000, $2,000, $10,000. Uh, and you can see the response. Again, it's an average, the load drops. So during that time we drop, and through the day we actually, we, we average a lower production rate, a lower load. When we get through the day, back till six o'clock at night, then we have another peak in the power price. 2016 average, about $120 a megawatt hour. Again, um, occasions where that was hit market cap, which was $13,000 a megawatt hour. And we also have that reduced production there at that time, that reduced load. So with a solar farm, with that generation, uh, in the middle of the day, we actually won't be at a reduced production level. We'll be at uh, maximum production. So there's a, a big advantage there for, it, for us in that respect. And we'll also take advantage as not only the consumer of, of the generation from the solar farm, but we'll have an opportunity to export that, that electricity to the, to the grid, to the NEM, based on power price. So if we see a, a $5,000 per megawatt hour event in the market, we might still decide to turn down the refinery and send that electricity back out to the market. So there's, a, there's a quite a few things here that work for us and probably put us in a unique position. Um, LGCs, so large scale generation certificates, and this is uh, another one of the drivers for the project. This really is a driver, this is what's driving the, uh, the, the rate of this project. We're really trying to push, the, push this project through quite quickly at the moment. And the reason is uh, the LGC price. So right now it's about $80 a megawatt hour. Uh, the solar farm uh, forecast generation year one is about 294,000 megawatt hours. So for every one of those megawatt hours, if that market price is $80, we get $80 for that. So if you imagine for every $10 a megawatt hour or $10 per LGC, we get about $3 million a year. 
So the forecast at the moment is that LGC price will hold up through 2017. It probably looks a little bit better than, than it does in the graph there for 2018 right now. Right now it's still up around $80. But 2019, 2020, it's dropping down to f close to $40 a megawatt hour. So for us, as the developer, it's really a 12-month construction program. Um, planning is a little bit longer than that, engineering a little bit longer than that. But, but all up, from where we are right now, we, we're going to push it through in 12 months so we can capture the value in those LGCs in 20, 2018. It makes a big difference in the project payback. Uh, just to give you an idea of uh, solar PV uh, cost competitiveness now, and the, uh, the, the chart there was um, published by Renew Economy. Uh, looking back, uh, 2014, 2015, the yellow dots are projects that have actually been constructed and they were um, construction costs, so dollar per watt installed. And at that time, they were about, about $3, a little bit less than $3 per watt installed capacity. Stepping forward now to 2016, 2017, and the blue ones, are, the, the blue dots are projects that are in, in planning or, uh, you know, have the go-ahead. And construction costs there are about $1.50. So the difference, it's, it's, it's virtually halved in price in capital intensity from 2014 to, to 2016, 2017. And uh, Sun Metals in there, where the, the, the big spot down the bottom, the blue one, so our... Um, capital intensity for the project is $1.35 per watt installed capacity. We had some advantages. We already owned the land surrounding the refinery and we already had the, the substation. So there were some costs there that, that weren't incurred for us, but all the same, uh, we've achieved a, a very good um, in, installed cost for the project. So how the, how the solar farm will be connected, uh, the line diagram is the existing substation at the refinery. The solar, the solar project will connect to that existing substation at the 33 kV bus. And from that point, during normal operation, 90, 95, 98% of the time, that solar generation will go to the refinery and be consumed uh, by our normal operations. The advantage we have is if the power price is high, we can choose to send that back the other way into the grid. So we're connected, connected directly to the transmission network, uh, so directly from that substation. So it is a big advantage for, for the refinery, having an existing substation, having an existing connection agreement. So this is an aerial of the, the refinery, the existing refinery and the project area, uh, the, basically the three main sites. Um, if you look in the distance at the, at, the, at the top end there, you can see that that is Townsville, uh, Townsville's CBD and uh, the port of Townsville as well. So we're about 10 kilometres south of, of Townsville CBD. Uh, looking di from directly above the project and the land surrounding the refinery. And that's a designer's perspective on what the solar farm will look like. Uh, in reality, it won't be that colourful. It'll be uh, black, uh, nice shiny black first solar modules. Uh, but the colours there represent the different blocks and in the centre of each of those blocks, they're all about five megawatts size. And in the centre of each of those blocks is the inverter station. From that point, from the inverter station, the, the cables are trenched back to the existing site substation. 
And uh, my last slide is just to give you an idea of the project timeline and a little bit of an idea about Sunmetal's strategy in, in executing this project is, has really been about um, engaging a good builder, engaging uh, a good engineer in the process, but doing it efficiently and executing it as soon as we can, really to capture that LGC value. And um, so really we've been, it was a concept at the start of 2016 and we've taken it from concept to executing an EPC contract by the end of 2016. And by the end of 2017, it'll, it'll look like a solar farm. All of the modules will be installed. We'll have some uh, fine tuning and, and adjustments to do. And really from, from February next year, it'll be commissioning. So uh, project completion is scheduled for the end of May 2018. And uh, we, there has been discussion today about, uh, you know, the mining industries, um, you know, getting to financial close on these sort of projects. I think Sun Metals has, has taken quite a bold approach to this. And a lot of it has been about our understanding of, of the energy market in, in Queensland and, and the East Coast and what, what we see as the future as well. So we've, we've taken it very quickly from concept to um, EPC contract execution and we intend to push it through very quickly to completion. Thank you very much.